वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर नीरू टंडन फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इंग्लिश वी एस एस जी कॉलेज कानपुर इन दिस पेपर ऑफ इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज टीचिंग वी आर डिस्कसिंग अ वेरी इम्पॉर्टेंट मॉड्यूल दैट डील्स विद बायलिंगुलिज्म मल्टी लिंगुलिज्म एंड द डिसएडवाटेज लर्नर वी डील विद इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज एज अ सेकेंड लैंग्वेज for indians and when knowing two languages a person feels advantaged or he is in the disadvantaged position so what is the scene the researches have been done on this particular point and various researchers and linguists they have come up with their theories let us discuss all these things in relation with the english as a second language through learning languages even just by mastering a second language we develop a fuller awareness of linguistic and cultural traditions language is the medium through which the child acquires the cultural moral religious and other values of society it is clear that if we want to teach our child the culture we want to teach him the morals we want to teach him the religion for all these things what do we need first of all language the person who is conveying should be apt in the right choice of the words and the use of language and the child should also be in the position to understand that language in a proper way bilingual education is an umbrella term for many types of programs in which two languages are used for instruction bilingual child either grows up speaking two different languages or in order to learn the local language of another land acquires the second language now what does it mean by being monolingualism bilingualism or multilingualism these are three terms related with languages the speaking of the languages or knowing the languages first monolingualism as the word makes it clear mono means single and lingualism that is the knowledge of the language the ability to use only one language the knowledge of only one language that is known as monolingual the person who can deal with only with one language he doesn't know how to talk or write in any other language will be termed as monolingual that is usual and somewhere it is misfit also other term is bilingualism bi means more than one two and lingualism deal with the language a common human condition that makes it possible for an individual to function at some level in more than one language someone who speaks two languages is known as bilingual one who can to whatever degree comprehend or produce written or spoken utterances in more than one language is the bilingual person In today's global society the ability to speak more than one language is a valuable asset Americans fluent in languages other than English enhance our economic competitiveness they improve global communication help to maintain the political and security interest and promote tolerance and intercultural awareness this was said by pratt in relation with americans in fact that is not only true for americans that applies to indians also that for the welfare of the nation for taking our country's things outside going abroad working over there knowing their technology and coming up with all those assets to promote our country one needs to be bilingual after being bilingual the another term is multilingualism now multi as the word denotes more than two so for compound bilinguals words and phrases in different languages are the same concepts that means that 
the chin and dog are two words for the same concept for a french english speaker of this type these speakers are usually fluent in both the languages for coordinate bilinguals words and phrases in the speaker's mind are all related to their own unique concepts thus a bilingual speaker of this type has different associations for dog and the similar word for dog in the french in these individuals one language usually the first language is more dominant than the other one and the first language may be used to think through the second language these speakers are known to use very different intonation and pronunciation features and sometimes to assert the feeling of having different personalities attached to each of these languages subordinate bilinguals beginning second language learners are there and multilingualism is one thing that is the ability of an individual speaker or a community of speakers to communicate effectively in more than two maybe three or maybe more than three the word will be multilingual contrast with monolingualism the ability to use only one language a person who can speak multiple languages is known as multilingual or another word for him is polyglot today there are around 7000 languages in the world and an increasing number of situations in which two or more languages coexist and are indispensable in everyday communication now there is another word known as trilingualism that is also used for being multilingual in the scenario when you use three languages at a time it is the ability to speak or write fluently two or three languages people may become bilingual or trilingual either by acquiring two or three languages at the same time in childhood or learning a second language sometime after acquiring their first language the inconvenience that may have to be bilingual or trilingual the cost of bilingualism or trilingualism is that they may have smaller vocabularies in each language students or people who are non english speaking they face several kind of problems in the classroom they have communication related problem because if the students belong to different languages then they need one common language to interact and that can be english and no other language interaction related problem comprehension related problem structural organization related problem and content delivery related problems now the question comes that who can be termed as disadvantaged learner monolingual or bilingual or multilingual for that matter do adults have a disadvantage when compared to children in learning a second language are children far more receptive to language acquisition than adults these are the various questions in front of us when we discuss the issue of bilingualism an adult holds an advantage over a child because of the skills that he already possesses because he has developed the type of sentence construction the hold over the language as his first language the same skill can be transferred to a new language without prior training there is sometimes a perception particularly among monolingual speakers that a bilingual speaker is a disadvantaged learner this view is often characterized by the ideas of cognitive overload and language interference these are two main points cognitive overload and language interference that one language already learned comes in the way of learning the second language when you learn it and by the still widely held belief that language learning is best suited to academically able students a bilingual learner is a disadvantaged learner or not and how 
bilingualism affect the learner's capability these are the question to consider english language researchers or teachers they keep on trying to get the answer through various researches being done in the classroom and they have come to certain conclusions that we are going to discuss early research on bilingualism conducted primarily between 1920 and 1960 broadly concluded that bilingualism resulted in cognitive deficiencies lower iq scores and even mental retardation indeed these studies often associated bilingual children with terms such as mental confusion and language handicap in this regard there is a very special study by baker in 2006 he just published it and that is known as baker's the cup model of bilingualism in six points what are these six points number 1 irrespective of the language in which a person is operating there is one integrated source of thought bilingualism and multilingualism are possible because people have the capacity to easily store two or more languages people can also function in two or more languages with relative ease third point that information processing skill and educational attainment may be developed through two languages as well as through one language both channels feed the same central processor next the language a student uses in the classroom needs to be sufficiently well developed or them to be able to process the cognitive challenges that are presented is speaking listening reading or writing in the first and second languages help the whole cognitive system to develop however if a students are made to operate in an insufficiently developed l2 without resources to their l1 as is the case with the mainstream the system will not function at its best when one or both languages are not functioning fully for example because of an unfavorable attitude to learning through l1 or pressure to replace l1 with l2 so a students cognitive functioning and academic performance may be negatively affected now what is the cup model it is known as common underlying proficiency jim cummins is the name associated with this cup model jim cummins a prominent bilingual and second language researcher developed a model that much more accurately depicts the working of the mind in relation to bilingual acquisition it is called cup model and there is one more name for this that is iceberg analogy this is presented in the form of two icebergs now you can see in this particular figure that the iceberg analogy what do we mean by that there are two sections at the surface level you have first language surface features on the other side you have second language surface features but beneath that common underlying proficiency central operating system that works in the same way for both first and the second language in this we come to know about separate underlying proficiency common underlying proficiency you see l1 and l2 they have separate places in the brain so nobody is affecting or interfering the other in the second figure you see l1 channel and l2 channel for representing those languages are different but the thinking process the storing thing is somewhere the same these icebergs as known popularly are separate above the surface that is the two languages are obviously different in outward conversation underneath the surface they are fused two languages the function together this is where a person stores their two languages both languages operate through a single central processing system which both languages can inherit by learning another language we have to switch back 
and this study was done by ann merritt in 2013 where it was said that we have to switch back and forth between two distinct system of rules challenging the brain to recognize the workout meaning for this reason bilingual students learn to become critical thinkers and perform better at problem solving task the brain has also been linked to a muscle since it is set to function better with exercise language learners need to memorize rules and vocabulary and thus strengthen their cognitive muscles making them better at memorizing lists and sequences now when we find that bilingual or multilingual students and there are bidialectal and multidialectal students now if we compare them then what is the scene a person who can speak in various dialects we find that whenever a person who is talking in a very refined manner in his office and some other places the moment he reaches his home his dialect changes he just in order to show familiarity in order to show closeness with his parents in order to show that he is one of them his dialect changes at the very uh, same pace and he starts speaking in a various dialects so bilingual multilingual versus bidialectal or multidialectal multidialectal is such a situation in which a person understands it means he can speak more than two varieties of the same language what do i mean by varieties of the same language if you take english for that instant you have american english with different accents you have british english with different accents and now you have indian english with altogether different accents so they have the influence of the land over the language influence of the area over the pronunciation also for example in north india a hindi language speaker may be called multi dialectical if he or she can understand or speak in bhojpuri bihari khadi boli brij bhasha avdi these are all variants of hindi over here these are variety of hindi language sometimes socio cultural practices invite multilingual situations like the marriage system where the husband and wife they speak separate languages of their own to the area they belong to in that situation imagine a new born child he automatically becomes multilingual by being exposed to father's language and mother's language and with that the language of the land or language of the school or college so therefore multilingualism is closely related to multiculturalism as well now bilingualism may be divided into various kind one is receptive bilingualism and the second is cognitive processing now what is it receptive people who can understand a language but they cannot speak it is not the same as mutual intelligibility just the way that many people if you talk to them in english they will understand what you are going to convey but at the time of replying back they won't be in the position to speak in the proper grammatical way so they don't speak but they understand so it is receptive bilingualism that language is not unknown to them but they cannot just communicate properly cognitive the language a student uses in the classroom needs to be sufficiently well developed for them to be able to process the cognitive challenges that are presented there are various types of multilingualism as well one is additive learning of the second language does not interfere with first language english speakers in quebec often learn french to upgrade their business skills they keep on learning as it is already established by scientists that brain is powerful enough to accept more than one language and they never interfere with each other subtractive learning of second language does interfere with first language because we try to use certain words 
of one language with the other language ways of multilingualism what are the ways by or multilingual education is mostly practiced in two ways simultaneous or successive simultaneous when child learns more than one language by birth successive in which child learns a second language when he gets mature he acquire that second language there is another terminology attached with it that is known as code switching and bilingual people are very good in code switching bilingual switching between different sounds words concepts grammatical structures and social norms constituted a form of natural brain training which was likely to be more effective than any artificial brain training program moving from one language to another in the course of a single conversation is very common sometimes people may not know consciously when they move from one language to another now you can understand like hindi speaking people unconsciously they use many many english words in their speaking and when those hindi knowing people when they speak english they unknowingly unconsciously they include some hindi words in their language a speaker is forced to use different languages in different situations for example he has to use one language at home another at school or sometimes another in trade or other daily professional situations with his parents he speak the traditional learned language in school he is supposed to do his course in english and when he goes for business or something then he learns the language of that trade suppose a person who lives in north he is supposed to do his business with rural people over there in south or somewhere in gujarat then he will have to understand their language in order to communicate so that code switching becomes necessity in the place where such situation is present the individuals learn language naturally or unconsciously and we can sometime observe the language shift also that is why a child growing up or brought up in a multilingual or bilingual society automatically becomes multilingual without much efforts various teachers suggested following actions that could be used to address the students multilingual needs that is preparation of multilingual material using example from many languages formation of peer group of students with the same language background providing translation type of home assignment for the student just for an example when you go through the beautiful essays written by francis bacon known as father of english essays he uses in his english essays many words from french latin or german languages in order to understand his essays properly one must know those words and in that process though one not cannot be termed as multilingual or bilingual but that feel he can have that what these words mean to him and that may create the need that may create some desire to learn that particular language different techniques to encourage the student to use foreign or the second language in the classrooms were decided by researchers and teachers in the following way like inviting students for group discussion formation of language group if possible in the large class inviting them to translate the activities asking simple questions about their casual activities in the different language suggesting them with instrumental motivation now there is one more word you will come across that is dual language education or bi multilingualism it means variety of the same language and different languages bilingual and dual language programs they promote bilingualism and biliteracy now you just understand the difference between bilingualism and biliteracy 
if i can speak two language of course i am bilingual but it is not necessary that my written communication in both the languages is equally strong maybe i can just speak but i can't write so that way i cannot be called literate biliterate or something i don't have a degree in the other language then i am not biliterate i am just bilingual so great level academic achievement and cross cultural competence when a student attain that then only they will be called as biliterate students maintain their native language while adding another language and they develop pride in their own culture while developing an understanding of others how many languages i may know but when it comes to sing your national anthem then we will never ever translate our national anthem in any other language so that is the beauty that is just the pride we feel in our own language as and the things associated with our own culture dear martin's report showed that the students use english as a language of interaction in the classroom in the presence of their teachers and they use their mother tongue in the playground or when they are away from their teachers in the same classroom when the teacher has not come they are talking to each other in a different language and the moment teacher arrives they start using english they use cultural specific interaction styles otherwise while addressing their individual friends so that is multilingualism and they easily use that because they know what are the situations that demand a particular kind of language now when we just compare bilingual with the monolingual so there are certain myths also that who is disadvantaged is the bilingual or the monolingual because sometimes people suggested that the use of monolingual because very few teachers are available who could speak at least three languages since in the brain of a bilingual person there are two languages that are constantly active and involve an additional processing cost it might lead to verbal skills of a bilingual person to be generally weaker that those noted in monolingual speakers of the language another study showed how bilinguals know fewer words of any semantic category in comparison to people that speak fluently only one language their vocabulary seem to be somewhat smaller than those of monolingual speakers many research studies cite the cognitive linguistic benefits of being a fluent bilingual speaker experts have found that children who are fluent bilinguals actually outperform monolingual speakers on test of metalinguistic skill students attending multilingual classes have come from different cultures they speak a different language and usually have no common language between them students attending a monolingual class are usually from the same background and speak the same language allowing them to communicate amongst themselves in the classroom now what should be the method of teaching of course for monolingual students the method of teaching will be same for all but for bilingual what should be the method of teaching many linguists define bilingualism or multilingualism as mastery over two or more languages but they are not clear on what level of mastery makes competence in grammar vocab communicative function etc there is no denying the fact that interpretative skills are transferable across languages and an exposure to the stylistic analysis of a literary text in the first language helps in the analysis of the same text written in a second language let us talk about adult learners who are already familiar with the systematic interpretative study of the text in their first language they can easily grasp the second language the features and the grammar and other features of that particular language by using that learners already know of a text written in the first language they can explore the text written in a second language without any inhibition another question comes in front of us that when we talk about multilingual people we have on the one hand multilingual adult on the one hand we have multilingual child now 
who is the disadvantaged learner it means whether we should learn the other language when we are young or we should just wait and adopt other language after growing up multilingual children learning more than one language gain in flexibility because they can understand and analyze concepts using more than one language system a lot of research work has been done to find out the correlation between bilingualism and cognitive ability especially in this regard the study done by peel and lambert can be cited but all these isolated studies were done with reference to the bilingual education of young children how does cross language transfer of skills help multilingual adult learners in developing their language awareness in a target language that is still to be discussed what are the advantages before understanding who is the disadvantaged learner let us know about the advantages of being multilingual number 1 access to multiple language and mul through multiple languages we can access various cultures if you learn languages at an early age you learn them easier larger language sensitivity is developed learning becomes easier in general and polyglots they function better now what are the disadvantages if the parent does not speak a language fluently the child will copy the mistakes suppose a person who cannot speak the correct way of english his pronunciation is faulty he uses wrong grammatical sentences the child instantly copies that and afterwards it becomes very difficult to correct him the language offered is not always rich and varied enough children with a language disorder may have extra trouble learning more than one language there are other disadvantages like extra cognitive strain according to psychology professor erica hoff who wrote the book language development he said that learning multiple languages simultaneously limits the number of words that a child can learn in a set amount of time then there are cultural discrepancies as well for many older adults the choice to learn a foreign language is one of interest for reason of business or as per school requirements but when children learn a foreign language the reasoning tends to stem from a parent's desire my child should learn german no my child should learn french as well whether the child wants that whether the child is comfortable in learning that or not is not the issue intimate link between language and culture can result in cultural confusion also in some cases especially when a child is of multi ethnic background then the major problem comes in this field is the scarcity of the good bilingual teachers to teach to make a person to make a child bilingual we need good bilingual teachers first the persons who have equal command over many languages whether they are ready to come for teaching or be the teachers or not that is a question primary language teaching needs to be standardized in some situations it would become very stressful to the child when he has to learn three languages native languages and the foreign languages now there is one more point that is language proficiency versus academic proficiency i know the language i can talk i can write also i can understand also but whether i have passed any exam in that whether any academic course has been done in that particular language is it necessary to be a bilingual students often acquire basic interpersonal communication skills that is known as bics in 2 3 years because these students can converse well in english teachers often assume that they can learn academic content in english as well however they must develop cognitive academic language proficiency known as calp a disadvantage is that students often fall behind academically 
while they are developing the language proficiency to learn academics in their second language. One very good example is that in our colleges and schools, we have both English language and English literature as separate subjects. The person, the boy, the girl who is good in English language not necessarily be good in English literature. When he or she comes for the research work after doing gradu post graduation, then the situation is worse because language he knows, but the literature he is not that good in. So he fails in spite of being bilingual. Delay in speaking, mixing the languages, these are other common things. Mixing the language means mixing words is very common. At the age of four or five, it has mostly disappeared. But don't forget, the children who are learning only one language often use the wrong word until they learn the right one. And adults often say, mm, when the right word doesn't come quickly, they try to fill those gaps. Additional efforts for the parent. This is probably the biggest issue. Raising a multilingual child is a commitment. And it will require extra effort on the part of the parents to provide enough language exposure, extra encouragement, keeping native language consistent and in some cases even change the previous language pattern. Then it comes to reading and writing, being biliterate or multiliterate. Teaching a multilingual child to read and write adds to the academic load. He is supposed to fulfill his study work in a school in a different language. Then he learns German or Sanskrit or any other language as a third language. And he wants to speak in one language. He is speaking rather in one language, writing in another and studying in the third language. In this way, that extra load can make him disadvantaged. With these disadvantaged, once again we will come to the advantages. There is no doubt that multilingual children have more advantage. The language learning delay that causes a child to be weaker in both his native and second language dissipates as she approaches her preteens. After a matter of some years, she may gain control over both the languages. The foreign accent that characterizes a child who begins learning his second language in late childhood does not bar him from working as a translator or integrating into a new culture. Accent training can help older children lessen the severity of their accents. In addition, learning a foreign language brings children more cognitive challenges. Additionally, the learned ability of switching from one language to another helps child build concentration skills. Research has shown that the brains of children who grew up speaking two different languages develop better cognitive functions. So scientists who examined the phenomena gave it a specific name, the bilingual advantage. Importance of mother tongue, metalinguistic awareness and improved cognitive skills cannot be denied for children learning more than one languages. They have more exposure. Like if they are visiting to other countries where that particular language is being spoken, it is good for them. They can be translators. They can just go in the, that particular part of the world without any inhibition. Logically, the more words we know, the more things we know about the world. Now think about a child that grows up speaking two or more different languages. The word of meanings available to this child will be much wider. To sum up, we can say that learning a second language that makes child a bilingual or maybe a multilingual is not really making him disadvantageous because advantages are many and whatever problems are there, that can be rectified with little efforts. So, children should be encouraged to come forward to learn many more languages. Thank you for visiting EPG Paatshala.